available on the council's website. Bear item one, there is no planned evacuation drill this evening and accordingly, if the alarm sounds, it is to be treated as a genuine need to evacuate. There are emergency exits to my right and by the lifts. Do not use the lifts. On exiting, you will be directed to the assembly point and it is important that you remain there and do not return to the building until I've announced that it's safe to do so. If anyone present will need assistance in evacuating, could you please inform me now so that we can make necessary arrangements to assist you? Uh, members must consider each application and everything that is said in the meeting concerning the application and make their decision based solely on their planning judgment of the information available to them. Following a decision by members, delegated authority is given to the planning officer to issue the decision notice. Planning permission is not granted or refused until the issue of that decision notice. Gets longer every time. But any member of the council who is not a member of the planning committee may attend as a visiting member and may speak having given prior notification. Such visiting members may of course include ward members and whilst visiting members can speak on an application, they are not permitted to vote. Any member acting as a substitute must have undertaken appropriate training. Members must remain in the meeting for the whole time that each item is being debated uh, and should not vote on that item unless they have done so. I would now like to welcome our public speakers and remind you that you have three minutes to speak and an audible warning of time will be given when there are 30 seconds remaining. If the meeting is deferred to conduct a site meeting, you may speak both at this meeting and at the site meeting, but there will be no further opportunity to speak on the matter, whether it is under review. Uh, the meeting will follow the order set out in the agenda, except it won't. They'll be taking 2.2 first. Right. Uh, item two, apologies for absence and substitutes. Thank you, Chair. Apologies have been received from Councillor Julian Speed, who is substituted by Councillor Mark Tucker, and also from Councillor Elliot Jays, who is substitu substituted by Councillor Anne Kavanagh. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask uh, if any members have any declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests? Ooh. And any disclosable non-pecuniary interests under the Code of Conduct adopted by the Council? Nope. I'd like to remind the meeting that where it is possible that a fair-minded and informed observer Having considered the facts would conclude that there is a real possibility that a member might be predetermined or biased on any agenda. The member should declare this possibility and then leave the room whilst that item is considered. Item four, minutes. To approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of June. Agreed, thank you and the extraordinary meeting held on the 28th of June. Find them in a minute. OK, item five to consider the attached head of planning reports, parts two and five. The first item is 2.2, uh, 504598 slash full, land at Queenborough Road, Minster. Can I invite the planning officer to provide a summary and update on the application? Um, hello, good evening, Chairman, Councillors, members of the public. Uh, this is a Full planning application for the erection of a Class E A retail store and associated parking, access, servicing, and landscaping land at Queensborough Road, Isle of Sheppey, uh, in Kent. Members would have, would have received the um, the update sheets uh, the this morning or yesterday evening, dealing with um, uh, a number of issues. The first issue 
in respect to the KCC ecology position, uh, particularly in respect of um, the revised landscape plan um, to include native planting only. Um, the and also the metric results with regards to um, um, biodiversity uh, net gain. Um, the second issue was in respect of further representation we've received um, online and in the post in respect of neighbours and those are set out in Paris 2.1 to 2.5. Uh, the third issue is in respect of a representation from Tesco PLC. Um, matters covered and the officers' comments um, 3.1 um, onwards. Um, essentially, all those matters are covered within the officer report in any event. Um, the fourth issue is in respect um, of a cabinet resolution in 2019 in respect of the threshold for um, the consideration of a retail impact assessment, which officers at the time were not aware of that cabinet resolution. In any event, the application has been considered by independent specialists and the recommendations of that specialist are contained within this report and the recommendation remains unchanged. Um, lastly, Chair, we have received um, a number of representations from residents within the island, almost two and a half thousand representations and indicating those persons either supporting, objecting or undecided in terms of the application before you this evening. So as, recommend, as recommended at um, uh, uh, part six to the update notes, um, the application is to before you um, with a um, resolution to, to grant permission. So I'll quickly run through a the, the presentation, you still hear me, haven't you? I'm going to lean over the microphone. Um, we can run through the, the presentation. Uh, this is a aerial photograph um, of the site, edged, edged in red, with the access to the right-hand side of the screen as, as viewed. Um, to the north of no, this is the, uh, I think it's the west of the site actually. Um, that's the new battery plant currently under under construction. This is the, the red line area of the application site um, in context. So it's not very clear, um, very clear members. This slide shows the the layout of the site um, with the, the building to the western part of the site close to the um, battery plant, the associated parking um, and servicing areas uh, around the building with the, the access um, onto Queensborough Road the left hand side of the uh, plan. This uh, is a drawing which shows the elevational treatments of the proposed little store um, with the arched roof to the central part of the store and the other elevations as indicated. This plan shows landscaping within the sites, landscaping generally found to the periphery of the sites. And as I said, the planning indicates that planting will be of native species only. Again, the further aerial photograph 
of the site facing the southeast. This is a view of um, the wider context showing the Neats Court Grade 2 listed building in the in the foreground with the um, post uh, little store to to the top left of of the um, of the plan behind the battery plant. And again, further aerial photographs um, of the site um, in its wider context um, with the Aldi distribution center um, straight through front of you and the um, application itself to the the top left hand corner of this of this plan. This shows the relationship of the Neats Court listed buildings um, and the location of that complex with the application to um, to the east of, of Neats Court and you can see the the physical separation between those two, um, those two elements. So this is a photo montage showing the building in the context of its location within the site, with um, access off um, off the road. With Indicative planting. Again, further imagery of the sites um, when viewed. When viewed looking, looking west. Along along Queensborough Road. That ends the presentation, Chair. Um, if it would help members, I can quickly run through the conclusion to the report, um, which states that in view of the relevant material considerations set out above, no significant harm in respect of the impact of the development on the vitality and viability of Sheerness Town Centre is identified. However, the proposal is acknowledged to be a departure from the local plan allocation for a hotel as set out in policy A4. However, that as assessed on its own is not considered to be up to weight way the inherent, the inherent economic, social and environmental benefits of the proposal, including significant biodiversity net gain, carbon emissions, reductions and job creations of up to 40 jobs. Additionally, there will be off-site improvements for active travel along footpath and cycleway network extensions uh, in proximity to the site. There are no unacceptable harms identified in terms of highway safety and access, living conditions or heritage assets as identified. The proposal is sustainable development as evidenced by other technical considerations on drainage energy energy and ecological impacts on the balance when all matters are considered the proposal is considered to be acceptable in in accordance with the local plan and national planning policy guidance the recommendation chair is a planning permission should be granted subject to safeguarding conditions as identified. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> right, our first speaker tonight is Town Councillor Dolly Worcester from Sheerness Town Council. Are you there, Dolly? Yes, Chair. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, we certainly can. You've got three minutes. Lovely. Uh, I might need some indulgence on that, Chair, this evening. I've got a, a, a bit of a chest infection, so I'm prone to coughing fits. So I'd, I'd quite like to get through it if that's possible. However, 
Right, uh, good evening, um, members. Thank you very much for uh, taking Shinnis Town Council's uh, opinion into consideration this evening. Obviously, uh, Shinnis represents a number of residents. Um, Shinnis forms part of the local plan, especially with regards to the economy triangle uh, that has been set out between uh, Shinnis, Minster and Queenborough, not Shinnis, Queenborough and Neats Court um, and Minster. That's the, that's the crucial difference here. Um, I understand there is a huge amount of support for this application. I can understand why on the surface, because obviously you're looking at local job creation. However, you are not looking at local job creation that's easy to get to. Uh, there is uh, this fallacy with this application that apparently people will be using the existing cycle path to get there. Uh, they won't be. It's not very well used at the moment. Um, and there is certainly no easy way to reach Neats Court from Sheerness at all. Uh, the application is set out on I think 1.8 hectares of land. Um, 2.5 hectares of land is available at Westminster and has been for many, many, many years that could have easily accommodated this planning application and the jobs for the low skilled uh, economy, bringing in those jobs to people that actually need it, people who've not got access to cars, because that's really the only uh, type of residence that is supported by Needs Call is those with cars. There are no bus, uh, potential bus access uh, areas uh, at Needs Court, and in fact, KCC are seeing to it that uh, the bus services are crippled rather than thriving in any area of Kent at the moment, uh, and that has to be taken into consideration here. You will be encouraging more pollution, you will be encouraging more car use, and you will not be encouraging uh, job creation for those residents that desperately need these sort of jobs. Um, Swalborough Council has already uh, came back quite reasonably and suggested they'd like Aldi to set up shop in this area as well. Therefore, this area will benefit from two low cost supermarkets, whereas areas like uh, Laysdown, Rushing and Sheerness will have no low cost option whatsoever. So again, you're only really suiting uh, those people on middle incomes rather than those people that actually need this uh, support on a daily basis. Uh, within your uh, own local plan, uh, we've got uh, a couple of different policies that support this uh, potential uh, area, which is, I think, ST6. Uh, no, sorry, I'm poorly. Uh, sorry. Um, so that, that obviously looks at, for instance, the fact that uh, to consolidate and enhance the retail and service role of Sheerness Town Centre, especially where increasing its competition and provision or providing other services to enhance the centre. You're in fact removing all of that opportunity for Sheerness residents and it doesn't really fit in with supporting Queenborough residents in that way either because you've got a very small, uh, practically useless path that links Neats Court with Queenborough that Swellborough Council has invested lots of money in and they can't use after dark. It's unsafe and antisocial and regularly has uh, an encampment on there. That is the time. You've overrun a little bit. So. Oh, I do apologise. Sorry, Chair. Thank you very That's much right. for listening. Uh, can we have Holly Masterson, the applicant, please? Good evening, everyone. A few months ago, this planning committee met to approve the long awaited Aldi relocation. The judicial review delays brought on by a competitor have been at the forefront of our minds with this application. Nonetheless, in a time of ever increasing prices, we believe that now more than ever, it is important to rise to the challenge and give residents of the Isle of Sheppey an increased choice for their grocery shopping. We have clearly demonstrated to the satisfaction of the case officer that there are no alternative sites within Sheerness Town Centre that could accommodate our store and that we will not have a significant adverse retail impact on the town centre. This is due to the fact that almost all our trade will derive from Neats Court, most notably the relocated Aldi and not Sheerness Town Centre. This site has long been allocated for development in the local plan we have demonstrated to the case officer's satisfaction that there is no demand from any hotel operators to bring forward the allocated use and therefore an alternative use must be found. Our proposed store will finally bring the site into productive use, generating up to 40 new jobs, 
and providing an increased choice in discount grocery shopping during a cost of living crisis. Our sustainable proposals have been sensitively designed to provide a unique little store befitting of this gateway site. Our landscaping will provide a biodiversity net gain of over 10%, complemented by a significant public art installation from a local artist. In addition, we will be constructing a new footway and cycleway along Queenborough Road to improve accessibility to the site for those who do not drive. In terms of traffic, both the local highway authority and national highways are satisfied that there will be no adverse impact on the road networks and have no objections. In fact, national highways have gone on record to say that any further development will call for improvements to the A249 and A2500 junctions. So in effect, granting us planning permission will provide a catalyst for securing these improvements. This application has received overwhelming support from residents of the Isle of Sheppey. Over 91% of residents that responded to our public consultation are in support of our proposals. Many of these residents wrote to tell us they are currently making the journey to the mainland to do their seconds. grocery shop with us in Sittingbourne. These people welcome a little store in their local community. In summary, this multi-million pound investment in the Isle of Sheppey will deliver new jobs and increase local shopping for local residents. I therefore hope you will accept your officer's recommendation and grant us planning permission this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to speak as a member of the council rather than a member of the committee? Councillor Nundy, are you with us? Looks like he's not here. Okay, I'll move the officer recommendation. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Booth, thank you. Uh, who wants to go first? Councillor Winkless. Thank you, um, Chair. I've looked at this very, very closely and I've listened to both speakers tonight. Um, my view on this is that it's a well designed um, uh, development. As has already been said, it will bring some employment to the area limited of 40 is not many in the big picture of things but at least it's it's 40 jobs possibly more at a later date the highways there is a very wide a249 when it was uh jeweled i always thought it was a massive road um for the amount of traffic that was using it uh so for a change in my view the highways are there first um, which does make a change. Um, so basically, um, I am in favour of this development and I'll say no more. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Inclus. Councillor Clark. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, is it possible for the officer to bring up a, a picture of the um, building um, and maybe zoom in on where the loading bay is? Not there yet. Is that the loading bay to the left hand side of the picture there where the adjacent to where the yellow um, colouring is? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a generic building. 
Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a generic building. It's it's neither ugly nor particularly aesthetically pleasing, um, as is most supermarkets. But um, putting my day job hat on, and I talk I talk directly to the applicant if I'm through you, Chair. Um, perhaps you could take it back to your design crew. Um, the HGV access to supermarkets is always seems to be an afterthought and the poor lorry driver has got to weave his way through so much park traffic without trying to you know, smash the cars up um, to get onto a loading bay. Um, that criticism having been said, um, I feel this is a, a very welcome um, application. Um, I shall listen to the rest of the debate, but I am inclined to lean towards um, approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, we have, uh, I, I live at the other end of the borough. We, we have four supermarkets in Faversham, um, Sainsbury's, Tesco, Morrison's and uh, Aldi. Um, and I recall there were pretty serious objections for every one of those plans. Uh, I'm therefore very encouraged um, to see, uh, regardless of the uh, uh, numbers in the report uh, or, or the numbers provided by the applicant, um, I have had, and I presume other members of the committee, um, just shy of a hundred individual requests for us to approve this. I've been on this committee for a long while. I have never seen that before. I've seen a hundred objections. I've never seen a uh, hundred um, request for approval um, uh, and 100% uh, of the emails uh, go for approval. I think it's a, a decent site, almost certainly not ideal, but certainly a better opportunity for a supermarket than a hotel. Um, uh, and I Certainly, if I were coming to uh, uh, Sheppey, I wouldn't want to uh, uh, be staying in a hotel uh, next to a, a battery factory and uh, uh, all the rest of the surrounds to that site. Um, so it seems to me it is a very positive move forward for people on Sheppey um, and my inclination uh, very strongly is to uh, support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Thompson. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know what the percentage of self-generation was on the building because I haven't seen anything for that. Um, and then also on the car park, is there anything given for solar canopies on the car park um, when we're moving forward with business um, applications and large parking zones? And also, I think it's being mindful of biodiversity net gain when you have a large percentage loss in a development. It isn't actually sustainable net gain because the biodiversity comes and then it can't sustain itself because there's such a large area 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 loss but that's worth bearing in mind for later but also on rapid charges i wonder what the charging situation is that they put forward i see they're there but it's not listed do we have any clarification on that because slow charges don't work so what it is from constituents, customers, is we need super rapid chargers. Um, and probably for the area and the amount of traffic that it's going to attract, it, it probably needs a minimum of five super rapid chargers. So that's quite a considerable electricity use. Do we have that information yet? Uh, 
Mission 16, Chair of the report, sets out um, the requirement to submit details of electric vehicle charging points um, to service 11 car parking spaces. Um, it doesn't identify whether they're, they're rapid charging points or not, um, but we can certainly put that point um, to the applicant. Because mm. if, if we can... Well, well, hold up, sorry, please. Sorry. Back. Uh, are we able to make that a condition? That'd be good. Um, we, we have to agree conditions, Chair, with uh, with the applicant. Uh, obviously, they're, they're here this evening. They will listen to members' concerns. Um, I would hope that they would um, agree with members' uh, rapid charging um, points would be the way the way the way forward, but uh, I would need to seek their approval. But yes, certainly, it's certainly something we can discuss uh, with the applicant in order that we can secure that that uh, level mm -hmm. of detail. Thank you. I I understand if we could actually make it a condition, I mean, they can mm -hmm. challenge it if they're not happy. Yeah. So carry on, Councillor Thompson. Um, I think yeah, we've got that. That's what I was about to come forward with. Was can we put a condition in because it's trying to create obviously the use of EVs and there's been obviously a massive coverage within the media um, undermining public access to charge points so if we can try and nip that every time a development comes up then uh, it'd be very useful and also setting percentages on self-generation um, they could quite easily generate most of what they need to use so therefore if we can try and set that out within planning or putting um, um, strengths on or something or, or some sort of way of setting that out would be really good, especially with a new development. So that's it really. OK, I think the issue of solar panels is something that we need to look at, but it's something that we wouldn't be able to impose here. If you wanted to move that as an amendment about the conditions, mm. um, I'd need a seconder. Would anyone like to second that? Councillor Winkless. So, I'll we'll find out what you're going to second first, Tony. Well, <laughs> um, well I'd, I'd, what I'd like to see, because it's always being requested, are super rapid chargers, not rapid, so it's identifying the kilowatts. So up between 150 and 350 kilowatts per unit and a minimum of five units. So that's what I'm proposing. Um, completely doable. So. And do you happy with that, Councillor Winkless? I was just going to come back and say I'm 100% in back that and second it. Thank you. OK, do we have any officer observation on that? If members would like to include that within the condition, then that shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Thanks. Would anyone like to talk to that amendment? In that case, uh, those in favour of the amendment, please indicate. Those against and abstentions, two. The first number of them. Okay, that's carried by 15 in favour, none against, two abstentions. Uh, we'll continue with the main debate, and the next person is Councillor Kavanagh. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd, again, I'd like to talk through the Chair to the applicant. As a non driver, can I suggest that they would strongly consider a free bus service from Sheerness? When I lived in Thurrock, we had a free bus that stopped to all the stops from Gray, um, from beyond Grays down into Tilbury. It was very well attended. Once a month, you stayed about two hours, did your shopping and went back again. Because I can tell you it's not the best of walks to go all the way back from Lidl to Sheerness. Thank you. There's a pub in between. Uh, Councillor Marchington. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair. As the Ward Councillor, obviously, I've, uh, I've been um, discussing it with several people. Um, I'm on Queen of Town Council, although I'm not a planning... Just to remind you, I'm a member of this, count of this committee and not speaking as a Ward Councillor. Yeah, yes, I'm, and I'm not on the planning committee at Queen of Town Council, but I attended the meeting where they discussed it. Um, the, um, I can only, I'm not... This, is, this isn't a direct statement from themselves, but they did agree that they could see no planning reason to refuse permission 
given the large amount of development in that area. Um, back, just speaking myself to board councillor again, um, I've had lots of written comments in way over 40, all in favour from for residents in East Sheppey, especially as it saves them time and money when shopping and therefore be a saving to the country in mileage and fuel and petrol, where, where, rather than having the choice of Shenis and Queenborough to shop. Um, and I'll end it there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marchand. I have Councillor Hunt. If Councillor Hunt is also going to speak in favour of this, um, I'm not taking any further speakers unless somebody wants to speak against. Councillor Hunt. I'm going to speak in favour. Um, but what, what I do want to pick up on, there's a, a few points. One of the things that's been said about not being able to walk from she and S and getting a free bus, um, a concern there I've, I've got that I think we do need to consider. One of the objections, especially from Tesco's, is losing people from she and S. If we start saying about putting a free bus on, you're actually shipping people out. It could actually change the the um, decisions that are looked at with this actually being allowed. Um, so I think we need to be careful when you do start talking about that. Um, but the couple of things that I do want to pick up that haven't been said yet is the, the things that are in here. The, the report obviously covers everything, but I think it's, it's right for us as the committee to, to pick up on a couple of bits. And that is that it is against what was the, the local plan with this being an area of the hotel. Um, but I think it, it is evidence well um, in the application that there's a reason that the applicant has proved that there is not a need for a hotel in that. And I think that is a good reason for going against um, the policies that we set in the past. The other obviously big issue is the viability in the town centre um, and again that has been well evidenced within here and it's in, in the report that that has been looked at in detail and I can't see any problem with that as well. I think it is we're doing the right thing by allowing this um, if we do all agree with it and um, it's in a good good location, good access and we also need to remember there is also new housing being built quite close to here at Barton Hill Drive, which also needs to be serviced by areas, and that's easily walking distance from that development um, with, with the cycle paths and all the other bits and new footpaths that are coming in with it. So I think all, all together, when we take account of the concerns that there are, um, it's right that we should approve this. Thank you. OK, get your hand up quick of future Councillor Booth. Last one, go on. Thank you, Chairman, and I appreciate that. I was merely listening to the debate before I chose my time. Thank you. Um, I, I'll start with our, our initial speaker. It's, it's pretty unfortunate, I'm sure you all agree, Chairman, that cheap and uneducated commentary with regards to bus services um, allegedly supported by Kent County Council is factually incorrect. Kent County Council will have no bearing at all on bus services um, given by operators. So for the fact, um, it's unhelpful, as I say. Um, looking at the design of the building, I think uh, it ticks a number of boxes and I refer members and officers to page 41 items 6.54 and 6.55 and I urge officers through you chairman uh, where it mentions the BRIAM very good rating I've said this before um, accustomed to large-scale building projects and the costs of large-scale building projects this would be no exception and there is a tendency from the developer to come back and say we can't actually achieve very good now so what I would suggest is that the officers Perhaps put that in bold, uh, whether that is a condition that can be uh, embraced and enhanced, I would certainly agree with that. Um, I also would like to applaud the, uh, the use of the solar panels on the roof. Uh, it's something that uh, I know historically uh, I've always been in favour of, Chairman, anywhere and any development that has a, uh, a roof structure of this scale must have solar panels. 
location. Um, I can't see that there's any reason for objection on location. Um, like everybody else here, I had uh, dozens and dozens of, of emails. Um, I even spotted one from Norwich and one from South End on Sea, Chairman. So people do indeed travel a long way to uh, get their groceries. It's uh, again disappointing that a lot of those uh, comments don't have uh, postal addresses. So we can check some uh, that are or are not on the electoral register, but that's just a, a point for future. Uh, jobs is a great thing. Um, the Isle of Sheppey is in desperate need of jobs. You'll remember, Chairman, uh, many years ago, this council fully supported the distribution centre, not too far away from this application. And to date, there are still 17 jobs awaiting people living on the Isle of Sheppey at that distribution centre, which is a shame. Uh, it just goes to prove, I think, that people are happy to sit on their backside rather than go to work. But let's hope that this application actually induces people to go to work. Um, that's about it. Uh, comments, for instance. Clearly, Mr Chairman, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Clearly, Chairman, uh, I'm in support of this uh, and I uh, welcome it and uh, welcome the support of all members to approve it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Booth. OK, uh, those in favour of the motion, please indicate. Uh, recommendation, please indicate. I actually think it looks pretty horrible near Calstick. OK, that's carried unanimously. Thank you. OK, the next item is item 2.1, land north of Plover Road in Minster. And can I invite the planning officer to provide a summary and update on the application, please? Sorry, I'm just trying to share my screen. Just bear with me. All right, thank you, Chairman. Um, so this application is for reserve matters for 25 dwellings. Uh, the matters of access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale are all for consideration. The outline for this site was approved on the 18th of September 2019. Uh, so therefore, the principle has already been accepted and approved. Uh, there's been a tabled update circulated ahead of the committee, giving points of clarification and the tree officer's response. Um, this slide just shows the uh, aerial photo of the site. So the site we're looking at is P2, the one outlined in red. And uh, this is part of a wider allocation um, in the local plan, allocation A11 and P1 along with P2 makes up that, that allocation. Um, this P1 here has been granted outline and reserve matters uh, for 95 dwellings. And then uh, you can see um, surrounding residential um, either side. Uh, yeah, OK, that's come out better than I thought. Uh, so the red outline of the site and then we've got the uh, proposal uh, that's the scheme that's already been approved um, that makes up the wider allocated site. So that's in the blue area there. This site here, the one that has already been approved, includes open space here, and there's already play space here uh, behind Clover Close, which is this little close here. This is Plover Road running along there. The community hospital is here, and then um, Mimosa Close uh, is, is next door on the other side. Um, and just to the east uh, is Thistle Academy and other community uh, facilities. This is the layout of the site. The, slope, the site does slope uh, gently down from this corner here uh, over to this corner. Um, and this is Clover Close here, Yarrow Drive and Mimosa Avenue. Um, you can see the layout, uh, the access is taken from Yarrow Drive. Um, at the moment, the 
uh, Yarrow yeah, Drive just sort of stops uh, short just by these properties here that already exist. Um, but you can see as part of the, the wider proposal, the Yarrow Drive would come in and continue into the site uh, behind. But our site, it comes in here as a main road with a road off here and then along here and then one here in a parking area here. So just a closer look there, we've got um, the landscape plan. It looks better on your screen than it does mine. I've got no colour on mine. Um, so you can see the access coming in here. Um, you've got pedestrian footways continuing into the site here. Um, and in terms of the layout, we've got properties fronting Plover, Pl um, Plover Road here. Also fronting Yarrow Drive as you come in here and along here. Then they've got them turning the corner, fronting the road here, and then properties fronting here. So adding some activity to the street scene and also providing some overlooking of the open space, uh, which is forming part of the, the, the larger parcel of land that makes up this allocation. Um, in terms of the landscaping we've got here, um, it's mainly around the perimeter of the site and they have specified native species here, although they've spelt it wrong in the key. That's not my spelling. Um, and street trees uh, throughout the development because it is a smaller site, so it's a little bit more limited. Um, but that that's the landscape in there. Um, and just in terms of the, I should point out, the parking does meet the standards and all spaces would be provided with electric uh, vehicle charging points. Um, where there is boundary treatment facing uh, public spaces, they would be uh, comprising walls rather than the closed board fencing. Um, and just to say, in terms of the tabled update, you'll see that the tree officer is satisfied with the, the landscaping proposals. Um, and there are conditions two to five which relate to landscaping. Um, and I would just ask members that I be allowed to amend condition four to require uh, native species as specified in their own key, but just to make sure that it is at, at absolutely clear and secured as part of the condition. Then we've got the site sections. This just gives you an idea of what the properties would look like and how they would sit with adjacent properties. Um, so the top one, this is looking along Plover Road, and then the bottom one is along Yarrow Drive. The maximum height is two storeys for the development. And as officers, we consider that design does fit in with the existing street scene and the development. And in terms of materials, it's a, a red brick that's proposed with some weatherboarding on some of the properties. Um, the roof tiles, which is specified in the reports, man-made slate and brown roof tiles. And these are just some images. Uh, so this is this red brick building here is the one on the corner of the junction of Plover Road and Yarrow Drive. This is the property uh, within Yarrow Drive. And then uh, these properties here are the ones, uh, the other side of the development uh, along Plover Road. And then we move on to just some street scene draw, um, photos. So you can just get uh, an idea of how it looks uh, in, in context. So this is that red brick building I was speaking about and the, the white weatherboarded one. And this is our site here. So this, this area is just opposite the community hospital. This is standing directly in front of the, the application site. So you can see the land drops away. And then this is just to the other side. Um, and then just to touch on, oh, this is from within the site, sorry. Uh, this is just where I've just gone past those white buildings. So you can see on this one, the sort of Harris fence in there. I've just gone in there and you can see the properties in Mimosa and the ones fronting Plover Road uh, there. And then this is standing in the junction of uh, Yarrow Drive and Clover Close, just looking onto the site. Um, and just in terms of ecology, um, an assessment was submitted as part of the outline and the findings and the recommendations at that point were considered acceptable. And the only thing that was required to be conditioned um, at that time by KCC Ecology was condition nine of the outline, which it relates to the receptor site for reptiles and that to be uh, re uh, to be surveyed for capacity, uh, just to make sure at the time when the translocation is due to take place that, that it does uh, it does enable that reptiles translocation to take place. 
So that secured as condition nine on the outline. Um, and so that is required to happen before development takes place. So um, that's still to buy at that condition at this moment in time. And just in terms of this application, again, I'll just propose to amend condition seven, which on this application that we're considering tonight, which relates to boundary treatment, and just to amend it to uh, specify that there needs to be gaps for small mammals and reptiles. And uh, with those amendments, uh, I'm recommending the application for approval subject to those conditions. Thank you. Are we OK with those amendments? OK, does anybody wish to speak as a ward member? Councillor Nundy, are you online yet? Nope. In that case, I'll move the officer's recommendation. Uh, seconded Councillor Booth. Open. Councillor Booth. Got there, Chairman. Thank you. OK. Housing on Sheppey. The MPPF is quite clear with regards to sustainability. This very moment in time, the infrastructure on the Isle of Sheppey is at breaking point. Anybody that has travelled to the island in and out of rush hour times will know exactly the routes to avoid, but you can't avoid them. We have one or two routes in and one or two routes out, in particular this area. And it's important because of the adjacent hospital and schools. Uh, and we all know what happens with regards to schools and the appetite for everybody to drive their little ones to school. However, that's one point, Mr Chairman. Um, I would suggest it is not sustainable from an infrastructure point of view. This will add further misery and added considerable delays to the local residents of the area. Using the general arithmetic that we use on vehicle movements, Mr Chairman, we can expect an additional 225 vehicle movements per day from this development should it go ahead. And that excludes, as I've said before, Amazon and other delivery services. So it's, it, it is considerable. It may appear be, to be 25 dwellings, but the knock on effect is considerable. However, I am um, conscious of the previous decision made four years ago. I wasn't privy to that decision, but I shall be consistent and respectful to those residents living on the Isle of Sheppey, uh, and I shall be objecting against this proposal. Thank you. Councillor Winkless. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I do echo the concerns of uh, Councillor Booth um, as far as infrastructure on the island is concerned, but uh, as I think we all know, I think uh, Councillor Booth touched on it basically, outline planning permission was granted for this, uh, was it four years ago, whenever. Um, unfortunately, as we keep finding out in the amount of time we're on this planning committee, and over many times I have turned voted against officers on this on these issues. But if we were to turn this down, the fact that outline planning has been granted, I'm afraid to say I think we'd be losing court and this council will be up against another possible cost. So unfortunately, though I do sympathise with Councillor Boo, I'm going to go with the officer's recommendation to approve this. Thank you. Councillor Clark. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a, a question first for the uh, the officer. Um, for clarity in my own mind, um, normal planning permissions, I believe, um, are uh, once they're granted, have a three year time limitation. Is that different for outline applications or larger applications? Carly? Sorry, I was just getting the. Um... Yes, they do have a time limit, but they have a time limit to then submit the application. So if they've submitted it within the time frame which they have, then 
it's still valid and we have to determine the application. And then there's a, once that application is determined, then there's time limits for the implementation of the reserve matters that you've granted. Lovely, yes, thank it you. Was submit, it was Sorry. submitted in July 22 and the permission was in September 22. So it was within, uh, September 19, so it was within the three years. Yeah, thank you. That um, I clarifies that, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I have to agree with both Councillor Booth and Councillor Winkless on on this one. Um, the infrastructure is woeful. Um, I think is the word I choose to use. Um, the the junctions, um, especially I think it's uh, down Barnes Hill. Is it onto Minster Road? Um, at the other end, um, where the Harps Inn is. Um, I mean, that that's diabolical at the best of times, let alone at rush hour. Um, I do struggle to find a, a cogent reason to, to actually refuse this, but the, the other point I would like to make is the design layout of the um, access roads on, on the uh, this mini estate if you like to call it um looking basically there there is it's going to be very difficult for um refuse freighters and other large delivery vehicles um the acts well not maybe not accessing but certainly maneuvering within that site um there's the potential for damage to the landscaping when freighters and other large vehicles are using that, you know, delivering or collecting on that particular site. Um, I don't suppose there's anything we can do about that now, but um, that is a big concern of mine. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. I must admit, when I saw the design layout, I wasn't ecstatic, but... I really am. Councillor Henderson. Mr Chairman, <clears throat> um, really just to pick up two different points. The, the first is following um, Councillor Booth's comments and looking at the um, comments on page, sorry, I've lost it. Um, 12, 12 and 13 mainly, we have to, perhaps regrettably, consider that an outline permission has already been granted. Councillor Booth recognises that, um, but uh, still sees that he'd like to turn it down. Uh, other members, I think, um, believe in the same way as I do, that there is no opportunity to turn down something which has been approved. And most of the comments on pages 11 and 12 really relate to the principles of the plan which have been approved rather than the detail that we are looking at tonight. So I think on that basis, um, I, I too would uh, reckon to support the officer's recommendation. I know the infrastructure problems are serious, um, but uh, I would at any point welcome Councillor Booth to uh, Faversham and I'd happily show him all the infrastructure problems that uh, uh, we have over that side of the borough as well. Looking at the detail, uh, two things. Um, the, the officer pointed out that the condition will specify native species, quite rightly so. Um, uh, and I would ask that that includes the comment we normally use, which is to uh, 
uh, seek improvements to biodiversity along with that. Um, and secondly, I appreciate the minimum demand for affordable housing on Sheppey is zero. I think it's a great pity we um, ever agreed to something which was zero. But we have recently had an application where we sought uh, help from the developer to make at least some affordable contribution. Um, I don't think we can condition that, but I would ask that we agree to approach the developer and seek a modest um, affordable contribution uh, to, to housing. So the, those two points. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Can we just confirm, um, as the local plan is not up to date, uh, and policies are therefore more flexible. Uh, are we able to rely on the MPPF and the 10 percent, but 10 um, percent affordable housing that the MPPF recommends now that we are in this position? Thank you, Chair. As reserve matters has already been approved, this is the point in which we have to negotiate affordable housing contributions and other infrastructure because this is the reserve matters application that's followed. We're not going to be able to do that at this stage. The considerations of this application relate specifically to the reserve matters. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just raising an issue with the residents that are in currently residing in Yarrow Drive that they actually do pay for a parking spaces and it is monitored by UK car park management that those spaces are only for those residents. Uh, I didn't see it anywhere in the report to, I don't think it's going to be a planning issue, but to compensate those residents or make sure they've still got allocated parking that then will be monitored. So it is just for their parking only, if that makes sense. Charlie. The proposal doesn't affect their parking at all. Um, so, and the um, development has parking to our standards, so they've got their own parking. So that would just be a management issue. Um, so if there's already a management um, company in place to deal with that, then that would be through that process. But in theory, it shouldn't impact them because they have parking provision to meet the standards for that development. So if I just come back on that, so going into the road, as you do currently on Yarrow Drive, the resident of number one has one parking outside and one opposite the road. That's their two actual allocated parking spaces. So the new drive that comes in Yarrow Drive, will it be right over the other side? So there'll still be that one that goes in? I didn't think it was too clear. Shall Thank I just put the perfect. layout plan up? Thank for that? <laughs> that helpful so so is this number one here yes that's number one there so yep. the current space is one right out on the side as you go on the left hand side of the road yep. the other one is opposite here there yeah so that shouldn't affect them whatsoever that should still remain so anything there should still remain um, and then all of these have got parking provision to meet the standards for that development so they shouldn't be parking out there, but people will do what they want to do and then that will be an issue for the management. Sorry, just one final point. I don't think it's actually that someone's going to park in their spaces, but that's the actual road. That's going to yes, be no, the, the, the road, that's the physical, the the physical okay. road wouldn't Thank affect you. it. Thank uh, you, Chair. Councillor Thompson. Um, yeah, just like to go back to sustainability and um, the climate emergency. The fact that the materials they're using are high energy intensity. Is there any way we can put some sort of conditions around orientation and also materials in the actual build? Because there doesn't seem to be anything there that 
that shows us that they're not going to be high energy use buildings. So they, they're clearly going to be using gas, I noticed, judging by their orientation and style. Can we not start to sort of create something that makes developers think differently? It's all the same pastiche of something from the 30s, which is really inefficient. And can we not move forward with better materials, better orientation, um, put in conditions maybe that are, that, that are taking them up to at least 40% um, self-generation, which they could do, rather than we've got again, which is going to be high intensity and high energy use. What can we do? Kerry. Thank you. At this stage in time, we haven't got a policy basis to assist on that level of detail. So moving forward, that's something that will be reviewed in the round as part of the local plan review. Thank you. OK. Are there nothing in the MPPF or any other exciting updates from Parliament? Not at this moment in time. The 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 main um, piece of legislation that will catch that is building regs. That's that's as much as there yeah, is at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So and, until such time as we can put a policy in the local plan, then we are a bit stuck to so, so, to demand that level of detail. Right. So we can't. No, we, we don't have conversations. Councillor Hunt. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm just picking up on the road issue because. I mean, when, when I saw this, one of the concerns I had was the um, the design of it. And I, there's a lot been said that we can't turn these down when they come to reserve mass. But I think we actually we can turn it down. If something comes up with bad bad design, then we can be turning it down. Um, but that said, because it is more in keeping with the housing that's around it, if we started saying we want something that's more... Um, modern appearance or something is going to start looking out of place. So I, th I think it's right that unfortunately it is the design that it is. But on the road, so have officers just got um, an answer to whether the road itself inside is going to be, look was looking to be adopted? Because if that road, you have Yarrow Drive is, must be under private, it hasn't been adopted because there's a management company in place. Um, KCC won't adopt roads that are accessed via um, private roads. So if if there is a parking concern, then obviously there will be a management company on this estate as well with KCC are not adopting. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that can be done on the parking issue to say that they would also need to be putting in parking restrictions. Carly? Um, KCC are adopting, but it is just this main route through here. Can I come back, Chair? Because my understanding is KCC will not adopt if it is accessed by a road that's not adopted already. So whilst they may say that they will adopt that road, it could cause conflict with Yarrow Drive if there is no adoption in place. Yeah, we're not going to adopt a road that they can't get to by the highway. That hasn't come up as an issue, so they haven't specified that this this bit isn't um, adopted. So I'm not quite sure what that situation is. Um, but the adoption plan that they submitted was because the KCC asked for that, and that was what was submitted was this this route here, and then they were satisfied with that. So can we put a condition on they cannot start until Yarrow Road is adopted? Otherwise, we're going to end up with a mess where nobody wants to do anything. Nobody takes responsibility. I'm, I'm looking at my legal colleague, but my opinion is that we can't put a condition on for that. Sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be enforceable because it's governed under a separate piece of legislation. It's under the Highways Act 1980, Section 38. I think maybe a good just i don't think it's going to change whether we allow this or not um i think it's allowed but may, maybe if we can just ask that officers do go and clarify this with kcc of what it actually is because if if there is people residents there at the moment that are under a management company and have got this parking thing in place if there is going to be an issue with adoption and whether yarrow drive is a, a eventually adopted um, that could cause conflict with, with parking. So if, if 
it's just a case of just go back and clarify it just to get known if it is a major issue that's going to come up it may have to come back again but um we can leave it with officers Charlie. Yeah, what you've just said is exactly what I was going to say. We can go and clarify with KCC, and if it is a problem, we'll bring it back to committee um, and then go from there. So basically agree subject to that. OK. OK, then. So, uh, those in favour of the officer's recommendation, please indicate. Those against? And one abstention. OK, then, so that's uh, with that extra bit. Um, agreed. That's it, isn't it? Fun? Oh, part fives, yep. Anybody got any observations? Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I, I strongly welcome the fact that for once we appear to have got a sensible planning inspector. Um, uh, uh, and I think uh, these were correct and valuable dismissals. Thank you. Councillor Booth. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I endorse the commentary uh, by Councillor Henderson. The uh, oh, going on. Yeah, yeah, not done. Um, it's worth saying uh, the the residents, the static residents on the Isle of Sheppey, are sick and tired of these holiday sites um, okay. scratching and trying to bend the rules and regulations. Chairman, um, the Isle of Sheppey has the largest caravan holiday site in Kent, and as such they are very well sought after. Um, it also combats the attitude that people are staying in these accommodations, not paying council tax and basically screwing over the system, uh, which is an utter disgrace. I am absolutely um, overjoyed by the uh, recommendations for refusal of these appeals it is uh, it sets a good stance and i uh, i applaud it thank you councillor hunt i just want to say one thing on this park home policy because again we've got in here on the um is it 5.2 that the inspector has given little weight to the council's interim park homes policy. Can I just, I think this is probably the last one that's coming through out of all these that we've lost uh, appeal. Um, well, not that we've lost appeal, that the uh, applicants haven't got through the appeal. Um, but can we please look at this park home policy? Because I, I think park homes is a good thing. Um, we should be doing something, but the policy we've got clearly doesn't work. And it'd just be good through the local plan process to, to relook at this and see what actually a good one that we can can come up with and stop using this one that we've got at the moment. I think that's being looked at, yeah. OK, then. Thank you all. Thank you for not having to suspend standing orders. That's a huge relief. And um, see you all soon. Bye.